Awesome and welcome back to the channel. We are on the fourth day of Flutter app development with the Flutter block series. We just completed yesterday where we moved the main home button, home screen to a block pattern. For today's video, we're just going to continue with this and we're going to design the next block which is for the checkout widget. So we'll just get directly into this video. What I'm going to do is just go in and create our first lib folder. We already have a lib folder here. We've created the home block, but for now we're going to create a simple directory and call it the checkout. And as usual, go in and you go to new block generator and create the once you're done with this it's going to create the block for us and you can see that all the blocks are created cool now just as we did yesterday we're just going to make use of the equatable dependency i'll just make sure that i install that extends equatable and we just going to make a super call on that. Make sure that this is present inside our state as well, which is this is the state. We just have to make sure this is present inside our event as well so just make sure that you extend the equatable class and we'll just call the super of on cool great job two things are done how now time to decide our event and the state what is going to be the first event the event is going to be very simple we're just going to make a call to load the items for the checkout page so we just have one event itself directly we'll call the load items event extends the checkout block event and we're just going to call a two string override and to make it a twisting on that because that's what that's all we need we don't need anything more just call it the load that load items event and that's it our work with the events is done we are not going to do anything we just we are not going to pass anything from the checkout widget or anything of that sort Go to your states and in, in here we have initial checkout block state. I'm just going to make sure that I refactor it as loading, loading checkout state. And we'll just call a, similarly we'll call a two string on that because nothing is going to happen with this state. We just have to wait for something in the state which is what it means. We'll call low. done the next state is important because this is where we will be making use of the loaded state so loaded state is going to return our map which is going to be the food name with the food price so how are you going to do that that is where we're going to look we're going to call it the loaded checkout block state we'll extend the checkout block state and in this place this is where we're going to make sure that we have the important call which is the will decide the map which is going to be string int we'll call that a food name price just create a simple map of cool what have i done we have just initialized the variable oh i may i, I think i made more my mistake initialize another class inside the class this is going to be the next state awesome just do a super call on that because we need to make sure that the equatable class gets this we just have to do this dot food name price is going to do a super call of food Awesome, we have done that. So next thing is to make sure the override is also done. Return the name as itself. So load at checkout block state. So that when you print this state, it's going to print this name of the state. So that's what is important for us. 
cool we have done the states we have done you define this events as well time to directly jump into our block and logic and define or map the event with the stage how are you going to do that this thing this thing is going to be as simple as we did yesterday we're just going to check if the event is going to be loading load items event if it's going to be load items event we're going to make sure that we're calling the load event to state and pass the event here how are you going to define the method go here and we have to always define a stream so if you guys are just new to this video or not following i would heavily heavily recommend you to watch the previous video that i did just above just the day before so that you guys can understand what is happening i'm, I'm not explaining a lot of things in this video because we did the same thing yesterday i did a detailed video on the yesterday so it's just going to be this is just going to be a fill up of what we did yesterday we'll directly call the whole checkout this is going to be checkout state right and the map load event to stay and we'll call the event here now how, what are we going to do we just have to call the async star oh, the idea is to first yield the loading state which is the oh, I forgot the name also loading checkout block state go here in that done the next is going to be the logic so we have to get the logic retrieve the values from store data so the idea is to actually retrieve the data from the store data which we had which is nothing but a simple model a simple uh, a singleton class to store our data so all you have to do is just go back to your block logic here and as usual create a singleton on that store data is equal to Once we do that, we just have to make sure that we retrieve that properly. So we just call items, which is going to come from there. And just nothing but store data of retrieve food details. Got it. Now we just put this into something similar. Food name price. So let's call it that. And I'm going to do items dot no i just have to make sure that i have to create this object first now do items dot for each now we have to make sure that you are mapping the keys with the value so how are you going to do that just do food name price of keys equal to value and finish this block awesome what have we done we have just took the data from the store data class and we have put it into a simple variable called as food name price and now is the work we have to just assign this value to our already defined state which is this state where is the state the state is here check out block state make sure to define that and in the state we're just going to call food name price is equal to the food name price which so you have it here awesome right as simple as that you just have to yield it great we have defined the block logic we have defined the event we have defined the state as well now to jump directly into a checkout widget and we have already a stateful widget first thing first change it into a stateless widget so we have control over what we are doing and go here and just do a control alt enter and it's going to create the widget for you and make sure to have this itself as a stateless widget again and remove the init states unnecessary stuff from this and we are going to build this widget this widget is gonna is gonna do nothing but it's going to automatically build when we are going to call our build block provider on this we just have to call the block provider block provider is going to take the whole checkout checkout block block awesome we just have to call the builder the builder is going to be context and we'll just call our method our checkout block next is going to be a child which is going to be this method which are here which is features defined call on that and our work is over now we have defined the block provider now go to your build method remove this entire scaffold which had yesterday 
and move it inside our very simple block builder method make sure to do make sure to return the block builder method and the builder method is going to take checkout block block comma our checkout block state and what is it going to have which going to have the important builder the builder is going to have context comma state it's going to take two variables we just have to react to these states now we just say if the state is load that checkout block state then we will return the scaffold great right now the scaffold is returned but how are you going to take the value that we are also returning from the block logic you can just do the same thing again here make sure to have a variable map string int food name price equal to map string int just initialize that and here inside the block builder make sure to get that which is going to be nothing but state dot food name price so we just can retrieve that from there and start to be make sure that it's the proper state right so we just have to do this and we can actually this is uh, is named as underscore food so make sure that you refactor this awesome we have just done that part checkout which is going to be done but we additionally i think have a total which total which is still need to be filled out so again i'm just going to call in total equal to zero on this and i'm going to fill out this total here which is going to be nothing but i'm just going to loop through the s k comma v and i'm going to do total equal to total plus c awesome my work is done here i've just finished this part now time to run the application and see how it reacts to us we'll just do a run on this i'm pretty sure this this should be it it should work as expected when the applications come up i do a plus it shows me one i do a minus it goes away now i do a plus again and when i click on this it throws me a huge exception what is happening is that it says that the container cannot be present here why does it say that empty space I am forgetting to return something. I am returning the block builder. I am returning the scaffold as well. Okay, I got it. I just what I've done is if the state is loaded checkout block state, I am returning this one. What if it's in the loading state? What are we going to return? We just do one thing here. If we are going to return something, I'll as much return the scaffold itself outside this low this if block so that it doesn't matter if it's a loading state or loaded state only if it's going to be a loading loaded state this food name price is going to be updated if not i'm just going to do this return outside and it pretty much should work without any work any, any error because i think it does work now so again we'll just check it now plus minus it goes away i'll do a plus on this and plus on this and we'll now click on this think it is not yet loaded that could be because i'm calling check or am i missing something in the block okay check out widget here who okay i have I, I got it i have read, i have actually called the states but i have not dispatched any event so how is this going to even react to that that is the problem i just have to make sure that i'm calling the event even before the widget build is called i have to make sure i've called a block provider here right so i'll use the block provider again i will call the checkout block equal to block provider dot of i just need to do it here and even before i return i just need to dispatch an event which is going to be our load event 
which is nothing but load items event cool i just forgot that so how, without even dispatching something how will it even react to that awesome that is a catch now it should work now i'm pretty sure that it should work because the logic is pretty much straightforward awesome the application is loaded i'm doing a plus on this and i'm adding this as well and when i go here cool yes now it was working paka fine because if you see you understand what i did subtract should again go cool flutter block is implemented what have i done i i just created the block provider i even created the response for the state but without dispatching any event how is the state is going to re respond to that and that is the catch and i'm pretty sure this should work as expected without any error and that is the entire application converted to flutter block what have we done just a quick recap we have created another checkout block state which is going to have three things we have one event which is going to be the load items event the user is going to give just one event which is load items and it's going to react to two things one is the loading state and the loaded state loaded state is going to just place the whatever data that is present in the db as a key value pair into this space and it is going to return that with the returning all the concept is actually handled in the block logic itself we just have a stream to do that and we have a loading state which is going to first come out and once that is loaded from the db which is nothing but our store data singleton class we're going to return return that or yield that and our work is job is done what have we done we have complete converted a complete base application which we did with just the set state method the simple state management into something that is completely flutter block yesterday was the base one we just learned a lot of things yesterday which is the main home widget and now we have just completed the application with the checkout block as well awesome guys hope this video is informative and that is for this uh, application development videos from tomorrow just tomorrow i'm going to talk about why is it important that you don't completely rely on a flutter block and also make sure that you know the basic say state management tools like just a state flutter set state methods so that you don't find it too too tedious to create a lot of block logic for something that's going to be very very simple let me meet you in that video until then peace out have a great day